Welcome children to our next class of mathematics. Today, I, Ruby Sharma, will be starting basic geometrical concepts. Hope by now you have written down the definitions that I'd sent you <clears throat> in the PDF form. Today, I'm here to explain some important points about the basic geometrical concepts, the definitions. Please listen carefully and keep in mind the important points I discuss with you today. So, <clears throat> straight away coming to the definitions. Now here you see, a point is an exact location and has no dimension. That means, what does it mean? This is a point. Can you see, I've just put a dot a point, isn't it? It has no dimension. Dimension means it has no length, breadth, or height. Okay. And there's no symbol. You just write point P. Or you can just write, if you write P also, it will mean a point. That means point is always denoted by a capital letter of the English alphabet. Okay. Now next is a line is a, what is a line? A line is a straight path. Or you can see a line is a collection of points along a straight path that extends indefinitely in either directions. Extends means you can keep on extending. These are all collection of points. <clears throat> is it clear? Along a straight path. And you can extend in both the directions. So that is why this arrow is given in both the directions. And how do you name a line? You have to know how to name a line, isn't it? So what we do, we select any point on this line. Two points. So we take P is a point and Q is a point. Point is what? A capital, it is denoted by capital letter. So we take two points on the line and then we write it nearby p q you can take r s a b c d anything you can take <clears throat> or x y x z whatever you want and then you put this is a straight line with two arrows at the end so this shows it's a line p q is a line next is line segment line segment is a part of a line and it has two endpoints. So when it has two endpoints, it is a part of a line. Now this line can be extended beyond the computer screen, beyond the books, you can extend a line. But a line segment has a fixed measure. So that means what? A line segment is a part of a line. So when we take a part, any part from here, because this is very long, you can take out two centimeter, you can take out one kilometer also. You can draw any line. Though in our books, the space is limited. So a line segment is a part of a line. It has two endpoints. So these are the endpoints. There is no arrow. Now here, there's no arrow. So this part you can measure. So when we are asked to draw a seven centimeter line segment, we can draw it, okay? And so it has two endpoints. So line do not have an endpoint, have no endpoints. Line segment has two endpoints. <clears throat> and it is represented here also by two points. Can you see the endpoints? These are the end. So P, Q, we write like this and it is represented by a small line. Can you see here? This shows it is a line segment, okay? <clears throat> Here yeah, you write line segment PQ. Now a ray is a part of a line. A ray is also a part of a line. So from here also you can take a ray. But it has one end point, which is called the initial point. That means what? Suppose I take P as a point, end point. So this is the end here. And then I take this part. Okay, so like see here. I've taken A and then I've taken this way. It can extend on this side. So A is called the initial point or the end point 
and it extends indefinitely in one direction. That is why we call the sun's ray example. Sun is a fixed point and from there the ray, uh, we, we have the ray. So it is, uh, comes all outwards, isn't it? So that is one example. So a ray is a part of a line that begins at one and, and extends indefinitely. So since it will keep on extending on this side, this also doesn't have a fixed length. And we write it like this. Now this part you have to remember very carefully. If the initial point is A, we write A first. And then we write the direction in which the line extends, that is AB. Now suppose if here Q is the initial point and the ray extends on this side, we write QP as the ray. So the initial point is supposed to come in the beginning. Now, an angle is formed by two rays. So this is the initial point O, which has a two rays that have a common end point. So OA is one of the ray, OB is another ray, which meets at O. So O is called the common end point. <clears throat> now here, see, I cannot write AO as a ray. Okay, I have to write OA is the ray. And here also OB is a ray. And these are called arms of the angle. So OB is an arm, OA is an arm. And the common point is called the vertex of the angle. And you have to remember that the vertex is always written in the middle. So either we write angle AOB or we write angle BOA. We can also write angle O. And we can mark here like this angle. So we can also write angle O, but it is better when we are more specific because there may be more angles. So whichever angles you want to explain, it is better you write the endpoints, the arms, on the point of the arms and the initial point. So this is A, O, B and B, O, A. Okay. Any way you can write, only one you have to write from here. Parallel lines are lines in a plane that are always the same distance apart, they never intersect. So they are lines, okay? They keep on extending on both the sides. See, I've named this RC, that means capital R is a point, capital C is a point on this line, and this is called line RC. So parallel lines are what? The distance between two are always the same. They never meet. Okay. A plane is a flat surface that extends indefinitely in all directions. Like suppose you can think this of as one of the walls of your room. So you can make a smaller wall, you can extend the wall on all the sides on one side or whichever way you want the walls. When you went, want to make a room, so you can think of that wall. That is a plane. Okay. So, in a plane, I have marked three points here. And since it can keep on extending, so suppose your walls, one of the walls keep on extending all the sides. That means it can extend indefinitely. The plane is such, okay. Or a mirror is a plane, part of a plane you can say rather. Now, intersecting lines. Intersecting lines are lines that cross or meet each other exactly at one point. They meet at one point. It is not necessary. They have to be two lines. There can be more lines intersecting also. And see how I have marked the lines. The points are within the lines. Okay, it is not at the end of the arrow. The arrow shows it's extending. So the points has to be on the line drawn here. So P, Q is a line. RS is another line which is meeting PQ at O. So O is called the point of intersection. Now perpendicular lines are lines that intersect each other to form a right angle. That right angle means 90 degree. Isn't it forming a 90 degree angle? So these are also intersecting lines. Can you see? 
needs to intersecting. But when they intersect at right angles, they are called perpendicular lines. The symbol for perpendicular is given here. This is a symbol for parallel. Okay. Now curves and all, just go through the definitions. And do not enclose part of a plane. That means it is open. Isn't it? It is called a curve. All these are curves. Now the figures that encloses part of a plane. Now you know this is a plane. The plane is also a plane. So when it encloses a part of the plane, closed figure, enclosed, this region is enclosed in the triangle. In this, this part is enclosed here. Two parts are enclosed. So these are called closed curves. Now when the closed curves are such, then the interior, which is only one interior, then they are called simple closed figure. So triangle is a simple closed curve or a simple closed figure. Or you can say when the starting and the end points meet without intersecting each other. Then we suppose this is the start. Then we can keep on drawing like this without intersecting each other anywhere and come to the end. So this is a simple closed curve. So suppose I start here. Can you see? Simple closed curve. But here this is not simple. It's meeting here also. Again it's meeting here. Is it clear all of you? Now next is a closed curve where the interior region is separated into more than one region. It's called a complex closed curve. Now a closed curve has three disjoint parts. Disjoint means they do not meet. So the interior here, it is represented by point P. Then there's a point in the interior, so mark it like this. Then point B is on the curve and point C is outside the curve, that is exterior. And the interior of a curve together with its boundary is called the region. Polygons. Polygons are what? Simple closed curve. So by now you know what a simple closed curve. They are made up of line segments. So triangle, quadrilateral, all these are simple closed curves. So they are also called polygons. Now circle is not a polygon because they are not made up of line segments. Though it's a simple closed curve, it is not made up of line segments. The line segments forming a polygon are called its sides. So you know what are the sides, isn't it? The meeting point of a pair of sides when two lines meet, the point at where it meets is called the vertex. Any two sides, now all these with definitions will be easier for you. Let's go through. Here. Diagonals, two vertices which are not adjacent are joined. Now see, these are two vertices, E and D. <clears throat> so they are adjacent to each other. But E and C are two vertices which are not adjacent so when you when you draw a line from e to c when you join them then it is called a diagonal did you understand this part d and b are not adjacent isn't it d and a are not adjacent so when you join you get diagonals and naming is very important i have written here i don't know how far you understood so just listen carefully when you name it suppose i start from a so it can be a b c d e is a pentagon or you can say a e d c b is a pentagon suppose you start from say d so you can go like this d c b a e you cannot say d a b c e is a pentagon not like that okay so it has to be cyclic order Either this way or this way. Like in triangle ABC, it doesn't matter because there are only three sides. But when you name a square, a quadrilateral, any quadrilateral or a pentagon, hexagon, you have to be very careful in the naming. Only then your sides and everything 
when the name is proper, now suppose A, B, C, D, E, or you can write E, D, C, B, A. So when the name is proper, then the adjacent sides, the opposite sides, the vertex, all will fall in place. Otherwise, everything will go wrong. So this is very important how you name the bilateral. It has to be always in a cyclic order. So now when you say sides, it is A, B is a side. This is also a side B, C. I hope you understand there are five sides. So two vertices, when are joined, it is called a side. Is it a side is formed? Now vertex are what? These are points. Vertices are points actually. It's a plural of vertex. So A, B, B is a point, capital letter of the English alphabet. This point is B. This point is C. So when two vertices are joined, you get a line segment. That is called a side. Okay, understood? Now, what are adjacent sides? Adjacent, as you know, is next to each other, isn't it? So adjacent sides. Now, suppose AB is the side you have taken. What will be its adjacent side? You can write AB, comma, BC. Adjacent side. You can also write AB, comma, AE. Adjacent side. Isn't it? So for AB, you have two adjacent sides. Either you write AB and BC are adjacent sides, or you write AB and AE are adjacent sides. Now this side is a line segment. So line segment can be AE, EA. In any order you can write. AE and EA are the same line segment. So don't repeat that when you're writing. So see, if I write here AB, I don't write again BA because that is the same line segment. But for naming a line or a ray, you have to be very careful. Line is okay, but for a ray, you have to be extra careful where the initial point is going to come in the beginning. Now, adjacent vertices, that is also nearby. So suppose I take D, what is adjacent vertex, vertex of D? You can write D and C are adjacent vertex. You can write D and E are adjacent vertex. Any one you can write, isn't it? Or if they say, what are the two uh, vertices which are adjacent to D? So you can write D and C are adjacent, D and E are adjacent vertices. Now diagonals. So what are the diagonals? When two adjacent vertices are non-adjacent vertices are joined, isn't it? They should be not adjacent to each other. So is it clear, all of you? I hope you have understood this. Just go through. So I think we wind up here. Bye-bye. Be safe. Till then.